네. Good evening. Shabbat Shalom. I pray that you are well and that you have entered his rest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for rest. Let's try and refresh and see who I have missed. Um, good evening, Mamu Cindy. Good evening, Amase. Good evening. Who have I missed? Computer is slow. Good evening, Stella. Uh, good evening, Nonto. Good evening, Songezo. For some reason. Good evening, Bonnie. Happy Sabbath, everyone. That word and that greeting mustn't shock you. It should bring you joy. Good evening, Mamuntando. Good evening, Sisanda. Sisanda, if you arrived. <laughs> Good evening, Pumza. Good evening, Mamzandile. We thank God for Sabbath. We thank God for rest, Bazalwani. Rest is our privilege. Rest is a gift from God to us. You know that the presence of the Lord in our lives bring us to a place of rest. The presence of the Lord in our lives keeps us in, in Sabbath, in a permanent Sabbath, permanent rest. Oh, that's great, Sisanda. Enjoy. Good evening, Ellie. Good evening, Mamu. Oh, H. The presence of God in our lives brings us to a state of rest. Amen. Sabbath is part of God's redemptive work on the earth today. Hallelujah. It is part of his redemptive work. If you remember when he institutionalized the Sabbath as part of a code of living for, for Israel. It was just not about Israel, but it was also about the earth being redeemed, earth being replenished, earth coming to a state of rest. But when sin came, even observing the Sabbath became a snake, you know, to some people. They overworked the land, not only through sin, but they didn't rest the land. Part of God's redemptive work is that he restores on the earth a priesthood that will move in his rhythm and that the land around them, the land under their feet is redeemed. It is restored. Creation rejoices at the revelation and the manifestation of the people that God wants to release on the earth, the people who carries his spirit, the people who speak life, wherever they walk, they, they, they show up and the land is redeemed. Land rejoices. Hallelujah. So Sabbath is not about uh, not cooking <laughs> uh, from now on till Saturday evening. It's not about not touching hot plate or whatever or not eating hot food. It's deeper than that, Bazalwane. Sabbath is part of God's redemptive plan. I'll teach again on the Sabbath, but if you've never heard the teaching on the Sabbath, you can go to the Facebook communion page and listen to the teachings there. Sabbath is our mark. It's a mark of covenant. That there are people on the earth who are not under the, the, the what is it, the, the, the weight of the enemy and the rhythm that the enemy determines for their lives. That when they, they should rest, they must work. 
they must work until they die. That is not God's plan for us. So happy Sabbath. Come into the state of rest through Christ Jesus. This is part of what God is restoring in your life. Amen. This is part of what God is restoring in your days. I was looking at the way my week just happened to, to, to roll out or to unfold. And I was like, Lord, if there was no moment in the week that allowed me to pause and to rest, I would be so depleted. But I thank you that you allow me at the end of the week to take in breath and to exhale and to receive from you new strength that will prepare me for the week ahead. Rest is war, Bazalwan. Rest is war because the enemy doesn't know how to rest. So whenever you rest, even in the midst of chaos, the enemy is defeated because he would rather have you in his rhythm, in his panic, in his uh, uh, the mode of operation. And the Lord says, I will not have my people moving at the rhythm of the spirit of the age, but I will have my people move by my spirit and move by my power in the name of Jesus. So when we observe Sabbath and we observe rest, you take a day in a week where you will rest and retreat. You take in God's strength. You, you go in the word of God. You spend your day worshiping. And even if you do run some errands, it is in a state of peace, in a state of rest. And you honor God and what he is doing in your life in restoring the rhythm of your days, rhythm of your years, rhythm of your life. Your body begins to, to assume a different form, even at DNA level. You rest. You enjoy God's restorative work over your life. Your mind, uh, you must learn to allow your mind to rest. There are people at 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, they are sending messages. And I'm like, I see these messages in the morning. People who never stop, you know. While they're supposed to be sleeping, they're already in the next day and the next year. No, that is not life. <laughs> yes, there are moments of planning and strategizing and brainstorming within yourself, but it mustn't be the norm. Learn to shut down and learn to rest. Amen. So we thank God for Sabbath. True Sabbath is about the curse being broken because curse causes us to work when we should be flowing under heaven's atmosphere. So when the curse is broken, we are able to flow in the blessing. We are able to flow in God's restorative work over our lives. So again, happy Sabbath, Bazalwan. Enjoy the rest of the Lord over your life. Genesis 2, before there was the law, before there were denominations before they were in whatever they call themselves who observed who observed those who observed the seventh day before there was any religion god instituted his sabbath a day of rest and we are not greater than god that we think that you know it's it's always we are always running it's always on highway 120 you know, Bazalwan, there is a moment of, of resting. There must be moments where you rest. There must be moments where you speak a blessing over your life. You, you tell your body to, to come back in tune with the Lord's rhythm, his life, his breath. So, Father, we thank you for rest. We thank you for Sabbath day. We thank you, Father, that those you have made a covenant with, you have called to live according to different rules, even the rules of stewarding time. For us, it is different, Bazalwan. So we thank God for today. We thank God that we are entering the, the evening of the seventh day. And um, according to Genesis 1, the day starts the evening and we come into the morning of the seventh day tomorrow morning. 
So as we come into today, we thank you, Father, that first of all, Jesus dealt with everything that kept us working in our flesh, even beyond what we wanted to work. You know, people who are under a, a drug addiction, they work any form of addictions. They work beyond their desire to work because they need to fill up something. They need to fulfill this addiction and the desire and the obsession. So they never come into a place of true rest. But we thank you, Father, that the work of the cross is able to break every form of addiction and bring us to a state of rest. The soul begins to rest from seeking a, a rest from other things. Jesus comes and he dies on the cross to restore us to true rest, to true Sabbath. That is why he says in the in the Bible, he says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Because I know not only, um, I need a charger. I not only deal just by the legalities of things, but... Um, I come and I deal with the works of the cross. It's in the backpack. Um, I, I come and work on the cross and deal with the works of your soul that keeps you working even when we should be resting. So we thank you, Father, for rest. We thank you, Lord, for the restoration of rest in our souls, in our minds, in our emotions, in the pink pencil case we thank you father in the name of jesus thank you darling we thank you lord for that we thank you for for rest in the name of jesus let me just charge this quickly i'll keep it on charge so as we come through today and it is our last evening of observing the days of waiting i pray that the days of waiting has been has brought a different perspective of who holy spirit is and what rest is the things that the lord wants to see on the earth in order to restore his his breath over his people there is a, 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 a condition that we must be in, a posture that we must assume as God's people so that we are able to receive what he wants to release upon us. We are still as expectant. We are meeting tomorrow as, as a church. Others will meet on Sunday. And as we meet, our hearts are expectant. As I was meditating on the, the few days or the, the nine days that we've observed. And now we begin the, the 10th this evening. It goes over to tomorrow. I was just saying, Lord, thank you that we are not expecting anything less. We are not expecting anything less because you have not promised us anything less. If you look throughout scripture where there was less manifestation of God's power and where the children of Israel as seem to have gone astray or have lost God's ways and God's word. It was because they lacked the desire. It was a generation that would have been so rebellious that they chose other ways. It was not because God didn't want to pour himself over that generation. He never... A, a, a wants to show himself in any less of a measure than he did in the early church, Bazalwan. He wants to come over us. If it's not with the same power, but even more so, he wants to show himself strong. So we are not expecting anything less. We are not expecting to receive anything that is, a, you know, a little measure of power. But we are believing God for the same power that raised Jesus from the dead to also be released upon us and to be released upon this generation in the name of Jesus. He is not releasing Holy Spirit in a smaller measure. That was on 
compared to what was on that was released on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. He does not want to move less with us, you know, Bazalwan. He wants to come even more because the days we are in you have a greater demand than those days. We are, up, we are in the days of the end, the last dispensation and the spiritual demands that are upon us are even greater than those days, Bazalwan. They were just beginning. It's like the relay. They were just beginning and we have come to almost the end of the race. It, now we need even greater speed and greater power, greater intensity. We need greater manifestation of heaven upon our lives, Bazalwan. So God is not coming in a little measure. God is not teasing this generation to say, you know, I will just show you a little bit. You will just read about it. No, God wants to show himself strong to this generation in the name of Jesus. He is not a different spirit. He is not something different. He is not someone different, but he is the same spirit of God. He is the third member of the Trinity who wants to show himself strong over us, over his church. He wants, Umbab Tabashalo, he says, God is calling for his church to return to him. He wants his church back. He is not pouring himself in a lesser measure, but he is coming over us in a stronger measure. He wants to show himself strong towards us in the name of Jesus. He is the same spirit that was in the beginning. He is the same spirit that was hovering in Genesis 1 over the dark a, 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 a waters he was there brooding about to bring up a, a bring forth God's creative power through his word he was brooding there waiting for the release of his word so whenever Holy Spirit is he's also waiting for the word of God to be released so that he can co-labor with the word of God to bring about great manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders. Where there was light, he wants, he, where there was darkness, he wants to bring forth light. Where there was barren land, he wants to bring forth fruit. Where there was confusion, he wants to set things into order. This is the same spirit of God, Bazalwan. He is nothing less he wants to come to this generation. Remember what I said, the only time he came in smaller measure, it was because there was less desire in that generation. There was rebellion in that generation. There was adultery in that generation. There was just disobedience in, this, in that generation. And he could not bring himself to, to function and to operate fully with that generation. He also wants to do the same thing with us, Bazalwan. He wants to come in full measure. He wants to come in full measure, just as he did with the early church. He does not want wants to scale down, you know, and, and, and operate less. But there is greater manifestation that we are to see in these last days in the name of Jesus. He is the same one who was from the beginning. He is the same one who went inside the grave and resurrected the dead body of Jesus Christ. He, he resurrected him from the dead and he broke that grave open and he allowed him to walk and, and, and to live again. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit who wants to make or show himself in, in full measure in us and through us in the name of Jesus. He doesn't want to scale down. He wants to come strong and he wants to come in full measure that he is. He is the eternal spirit. He was there even from the beginning. He will be there forevermore. The Holy Spirit of God wants to raise dead bones in our lives. He wants to raise the sick in our lives. He wants to raise dead things barren land he wants to water it he wants to bring fresh rain over us remember what uh, peter said 
Peter said, you repent because there is a season and there are times of refreshing that needs to be released from the presence of the Lord to the measure and the extent that you repent and you return. That word repent is to return. To the measure that you return is the measure that you are going to begin to experience the days of refreshing. So Father, this evening, even as we continue to wait, in expectation, oh God, we say cause us to return to a place where we can receive the full measure of the seasons that you want to release over our lives. Each and every one of us must experience a season of the Holy Spirit and it will manifest differently because there are different things that need to be addressed in every single one of us. So times of refreshing may look different to me as they manifest, as they do to you. Maybe to me, times of refreshing is returning of a, a what a lost inheritance, times of refreshing that bring about rest. Maybe times of refreshing to you is to see your child who is addicted in drugs return home, being free from the chains of demonic oppression. Those are times of refreshing. Times of refreshing, refreshing may look like healing to you. Times of refreshing may look like lifting off of depression and anxiety. Those are the times of refreshing that the Lord wants to release to us. Times of refreshing may look like the economy being restored, a, a, the, the, the rand coming to full strength. Times of refreshing are, are ready to be released, Bazalwan. But these times of refreshing are waiting for a remnant to return, to repent, so that they are released from the presence of the Lord. This is the same spirit mentioned in Matthew 16, where it says that believers will move in power. They will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. In this same measure that the Holy Spirit was promised to us and to the early church, he wants to make himself strong. He wants to show himself in that same measure. Nothing less. It mustn't be the, the casting out of demons and the healing power of the living God is not exclusive to, Ubab Tabashe teaches on the fact that it's just not exclusive to your pastor and your apostle, your, your prophet. It, the Bible tells us that it is the minimal, you know, the, the list of believers must walk in the power of casting out demons. A, 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 a little believer, a believer, not there is no measure, a believer in Christ, a believer in the word of God, a believer in the work that God is doing in this generation, must, must walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power must allow that believer to cast out demons. That power must allow the believer to speak in other, in other tongues. Now, other tongues are just not speaking something you don't know. It is speaking mysteries in God. It is releasing things that in your logic and reason, you may be limited. But as you speak in tongues, you are engaging with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is engaging with your spirit. And it begins to release wisdom and understanding for issues that need the intervention of heaven. God wants to release that upon our lives. He is not a different spirit. He is the same spirit. It is not a different measure. It is the same measure and even more, Bazalwan. The same measure, the same spirit that brings about repentance, the spirit of repentance over a generation that sees 3,000 people saved with one sermon being preached. Not a deep sermon, but uh, just the reading of the word of God and the confirmation that this is the word of the Lord. And people begin to be saved, not because they saw a false manifestation of power, but because they were convicted by the spirit of God. This is the same spirit that the Lord wants to release upon us. Now imagine walking with that same spirit upon our life, uh, on your life and my life. And as you walk into the uh, train, uh, um, 
station or bus or whatever, taxi. As you walk in that space, people begin to be convicted. People want what you have. They begin to cry out for the Lord because of the same spirit that moved with the disciples is upon your life. It's the same spirit, Bazalwane, where we are expecting. We are not expecting less. I am not expecting less in the name of Jesus. It is the same spirit who works miracles, signs, and wonders through the hands of the apostles. He wants to work miracles, signs, and wonders through your life in the name of Jesus. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians because this, this scripture always moves me to jealousy. Like literally, right? I, I always read the scripture and I'm like, Lord, what are we missing? And the Lord says repentance. This generation knows so much. We are dependent on big revelation. But remember, big revelation with no power to move anything is the is, is same as a philosophy. You are no different to a professor sitting somewhere in a university who doesn't sleep doing research and he comes up with his big revelations. But big revelation with no power moves nothing. Jesus wants his church to move in power. And that he wants to do so by releasing upon us the same power that raised him from the dead upon our lives. Second Corinthians 3 verse 7, let's start there. It says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious. In, in other words, if the ministry of the Old Testament held weight what is weight weight is that which is able to shift things in the spirit weight is that which is able to to topple principalities and powers and overthrow their seats weight is is the ability is the one thing that is able to dethrone principalities and powers over cities over your families it is able to dethrone the works of the enemy over a region that is glorious power if if elijah and elisha was able to deal with principalities and powers of his time they were able to deal with the jezebel of their times they were able to deal with kings on, on of their time they were able to shift things in their time by the same spirit yet operating in the old testament now how much more how much more this this verse eight it's okay let's read let's complete this verse, verse seven it says there the, was this this covenant held so much weight so that the children of israel could not look steadily at the face of moses because of the glory of his countenance or glory on his face which glory was passing if what was passing was held so much weight Bazalwan, such that it changed the very face of Umose and they couldn't look at his face. How will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? You know, if you compare the power that they moved in, the glory that they moved in, Moses, Elijah, Joshua, they moved in so much glory, Bazalwan. All the prophets of old, David, Samuels, all the prophets of old and the kings who obeyed God moved with such, such power. Now, the, Paul is saying, how much more us who are moving with the spirit of God, with the ministry of the spirit, not just the ministry of the old covenant, but the ministry of the Holy Spirit that was released upon the first disciples. How much more? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory or had weight, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Which means we shouldn't be looking back and desiring what they moved in. We should be looking at our own lives and ask ourselves, why aren't we moving in greater power? We stand on their shoulders, Masalwan. 
we stand on their shoulders. We are not starting from zero. And we are not just moving with nothing. We are moving with the Spirit of God. Now, when we read scripture, we should be led to this expectation that is beyond anything. The desire that is so deep that we say, Lord, if Elijah moved with so much power, if Elisha moved with so much power, if Moses moved with so much power, David, Samson, I mean, all these people of the Old Testament, they moved with so much power. Lord, what is it that needs to happen in our generation for us to experience the more? Because that's what we are expecting, the exceedingly much more in the name of Jesus. It says, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because the glory that excel because of the glory that excels we should be carrying the glory that excels for if what is passing away was glorious what remains each is much more glorious so father we pray even on this 10th day that you bring us to a place of deeper desperation for what you want to release upon our lives Father, help us to be aligned in our hearts with what you want to release in this generation in Jesus' name. Father, help us not to settle for less than what you want to release in our lives. Father God, help us, Father, not to settle for just philosophy and words and declaration. But Father, we want to see the demonstration of your power in our lives and through our lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even as we have observed these days of waiting and we continue into tomorrow and we meet, some will meet on Sunday. Father God, we pray that you release upon us a fresh desperation, a fresh desire for you work in us the desire to love you. You work in us the desire to, to, to obey you. You work in us. We cannot do it on our own, oh God, we pray, Father, that we do not settle for that which is less than what was released in the Old Testament. We do not settle for less than what was released on Moses. His glory, his face began to shine. Lord, the question is, why are we settling for less than that? Why are we settling for less weight, less weight? Father, we repent for, for being in a place of being content and being satisfied with the things that you are not working in, in the name of Jesus. And we want to come even on this 10th day in the name of Jesus as we break bread. Father, we thank you that we have the blood bought right to receive even greater glory. It was bought for us on the cross. For us to experience greater glory, was sealed by the cross of Jesus Christ. So we will not settle for what this covenant, for, for less than what this covenant is releasing upon our lives. We will not settle for less than what this covenant has for us in the name of Jesus. We are in the dispensation, Bazalwane, of priests. If we are going to move with any weight we are to understand the power of this table, the power of communion, the power of communion in your private life, at work, wherever you are, where you, you turn and you break bread and you understand this weight, Bazalwan. We are the priests who are going to begin to shift boundaries beyond what the enemy wants us to move. We are the priests who will establish that the altar of the living God and establish the kingdom on the earth. May the Lord bless you, Bazalwane. Even as you have observed these days of waiting, may the Lord respond to you, even as you have sought after him. May he reveal himself strong upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. As we eat and drink. Thank you, Lord, for greater glory. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Bazalwane. I will announce next week how we will be meeting. I will obviously just consider the times uh, we are on new schedule for load shedding. And we are trusting God for this load shedding to end once and for all. And we are trusting God for restoring this nation back into its a divine destiny and to fulfill God's plan on the earth as it was destined for this nation. So have a blessed weekend, bless, blessed Sabbath, do rest. And I will announce here and I will also make an announcement on the Facebook communion page on how we will be meeting as we go back to uh, the table of communion, uh, the normal rhythm that we've had before. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Bye.